Friends, here we start with the new lecture series on chemical thermodynamics. Concepts of work, heat, energy, entropy, enthalpy, the three laws of thermodynamics and thermochemistry will be discussed in different episodes here. Here in this video, we will see some basic and fundamental terms which helps us to understand the further details of thermodynamics. Okay, let's move on to it. So, to start with, we will see what is thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a branch of chemistry not only it stands in between physics and chemistry actually it is among the be most beautiful parts of physical chemistry thermodynamics is a tool that you use to see or use to understand your reactions your system whether it is organic or inorganic reaction or biological processes going on living beings whatever it is thermodynamics is a, act as a tool that you can use to understand your system and coming to the word thermodynamics it has got two parts thermo and dynamics the first part the thermo is reflecting heat and dynamics indicate a process or something which is going on inside your system so it is simply just heat flow but not only thermodynamics not only indicates heat flow but it is related to or it indicates the processes which involve any kind of energy or any form of energy so heat is a property and dynamics is a process so this process property relation is indicated under thermodynamics a process is something which changes the initial form of a system to final form and this initial and final conditions of the system are characterized by a certain set of physical quantities. This physical quantities such as volume, pressure, temperature, heat, energy, work and this physical quantities characterizes or explains the initial and final conditions. And the process, the processes are typically expansion or compression of a gaseous system or phase transition like in transition of substance crystalline substance from one form to another or a melting of a solid mixing of two components to form a mixture or a solution chemical reactions it may be so processes are of wide variety so here you have got two terms uh, systems or its initial and final conditions which are defined by a certain set of physical quantities and processes which convert the system from its initial condition to final conditions and a number of processes are possible okay now we will see two aspects of thermodynamics the first one is classical thermodynamics actually classical thermodynamics looks at macroscopic systems relatively large systems like a vessel of chemical reaction a reaction vessel or a beaker full of water or a test tube full of mixture this form here system under classical thermodynamics obviously it considers macroscopic properties such as pressure temperature etc etc of a system and these properties are investigated under classical thermodynamics and it is an empirical approach it is an experimental approach what we do normally is we verify our ideas and theories by conducting experiments in the laboratory so this ideas of classical thermodynamics are evidenced by experiments and it is a top-down approach what we do in classical thermodynamics is we observe our microscope macroscopic system and using this information we are trying to understand the system in its microscopic level looking at the bottle of water you are studying this beaker full of water and this information this knowledge was used to understand the molecular level system of water okay and now the second part the second concept called statistical thermodynamics is in contrary it is a microscopic approach that is it deals or it looks at microscopic system like this very small part of a system or it lo looks at a system in its small scale and therefore it looks at small scale properties like microscopic properties movement of molecules the molecular velocities molecular momentum etc are looked by statistical thermodynamics and these are generally theoretical approach quantum mechanical information or tools are used in statistical thermodynamics to understand this microscopic system 
and it is a bottom up approach here what we do is we understand the system in molecular level and this molecular level information are extrapolated to macroscopic level to understand the beaker full of water to so to start starting with the molecular water the movement and then we extrapolate this information to the beaker full of water this is what we do under classical and statistical thermodynamics just two aspects okay now we will see some important terms that we need to know before we really go into thermodynamics the first one is very common concept universe system and surroundings we have got the universe universe is universe the entire world and in their entire universe you are looking at only a small part of it whatever the size of the system may be and this small part of the universe that you are focusing is called your system and the rest of the universe is surroundings the literal meaning of surroundings is surroundings so the rest of the universe after your system is surroundings and your systems may be three types broadly open system closed system and isolated system open system is a system in which heat and matter exchange is possible with the surroundings it is quite open it can exchange heat and matter with its surroundings like in a vessel a boiling vessel open vessel where water is boiling you can see after a while when the water starts boiling the water molecules escape out and you can feel the and uh, the temperature on the surface of the vessel that means it exchanges energy or heat with the surroundings so such a system open system exchanges both heat and matter with the surroundings and coming to the closed system it can exchange only heat but not matter the same vessel but now it is closed so here it cannot give out the water molecules but it can give out the energy such a system is called closed system and isolated system is one which does not allow any passage of heat or matter from or into the surroundings and a vacuum flask or a thermo flask is an example of isolated system where you can't transfer energy from or to to the system and matter from or to to the system these are the three types of system open closed and isolated ones and now thermodynamic terms if you have got a system you need certain quantities like you mentioned the temperature of the system what is the pressure what is the energy content and these quantities that defines a system is called thermodynamic terms and a set of variables a set of these quantities they can describe the system completely this set of variables are called thermodynamic states for example if you have got an ideal gas in your hand if you if you know the pressure volume temperature parameters this this form a thermodynamic state of the system because if you know pressure and volume you can calculate temperature if you know volume and temperature you know what is pressure if you know pressure and temperature you know what is volume and if you know all the three you can calculate the energy uh, internal energy enthalpy etc so you can completely understand the system by knowing these three parameters that is why these three parameters are called thermodynamic states of an ideal gas okay now equation of state an equation which describe the state of a system like our ideal gas equation for an ideal gas system that is equation of state and then we have got state and path functions we have this system this condi uh, condition that an any system in its initial state is converted to final state but this is possible here in two paths the first one is the path 1 and then in path 2 and considering the state function or functions or properties which are independent of the path that is irrespective of the path the property of the initial state and final state are its own properties without affecting what was the history or, or what was the path for example mass or density or energy free energy entropy this all these are state functions they are not dependent on the history or what path it comes through okay irrespective of uh, the path like this final state is characterized by certain value of mass and density respective of it followed path 1 or path 2 and 
one important condition if if you take as an example internal energy this is a path function sorry state function a function of state it is and if you want to know the difference in internal energy the delta u the difference in internal energy when the system undergoes this process so the difference in internal energy will be given by uh, given as an exact differential between the small or infinitesimally small changes in internal energy when the system goes from initial to final state so it can be written as an exact integral of Inish, uh, internal energy the infinite the du is the infinitesimally small change in internal energy from initial to final path and that will be the internal energy in the final state and the, the difference between sorry the difference between internal energy in the final state and the internal energy in the initial state and such an integral is called sorry such a para, uh, can property is called exact differential because it simply gives satisfies this relation and the change in internal energy of both these processes the first one along path 1 and the second one along path 2 the change in internal energy between final and initial states will be the same in both the processes okay and coming to the state function sorry coming to the path function it is dependent on path that is the process or a, if you look at a particular property this property is different for path 1 and path 2 heat and work are two path functions for example work is a function of path and it can be written like this when you do when you write this integral you, see you cannot write dw change in work you cannot write because there is no change in work work is not associated with a state because it's a path function it is associated with the process it is associated with the path that is why work is written as a integral of infinitesimally small work done in this path so you have to specify the path when you write this integral over here and likewise in the second pathway you have got the work associated or work done in the second pathway can be written as an integral of the infinitesimally small work done along this path so it is path specific the work but here in the state function it was not path spe specific it was only state specific only initial and final states are involved here but not path and this is given by an inexact differential and you see the work done in the two processes are not equal but here the internal energy change or the change in state function are the same whatever path you follow but here it is path functions are completely path dependent and for each path for each type of process the work and heat are different okay now we will see what are intrinsic and extrinsic properties intrinsic properties are dependent on the amount of substance like Uh, sorry independent on the amount of substance like color hardness etc whereas extrinsic properties depend on the amount of substance like size of something or mass of something and the next is steady state and equilibrium in order to understand this we will consider an example of a metal bar like this isolated in its both sides the two sides but the other two sides this side and this side are open so this is an open system and here this end is maintained at a temperature t1 and this end is at a colder temperature such that t1 is greater than t2 and in this system if you look at this in the beginning you can see this temperature this end the t1 the hot end is hot much hotter and the cold end is colder and after a while you can see the heat flows when you look in time dependent you can see heat flows from the hotter end to the cold end and as you are providing energy from this side what you can attain is you can see that the temperature difference between t1 and t2 is kept constant you can see after a while there the temperature difference between the two ends are constant because you are supplying energy from this end and that is a condition of a steady state on the other hand you have the same system but completely isolated you have now isolated this metal bar from its surroundings completely there is no energy transfers possible between the system and the surroundings 
In such a case, at the beginning, heat flows from the hot end T1 to T2 and after a while, you can see it attains equilibrium. That is, there is you can not observe any temperature difference between the two ends. And such a state is called equilibrium state. This is very much analogous to human body. Like if you are, you suppose your body temperature is 37 degrees and if you are at a colder temperature, what happens is the system gives out energy or your the system, your body tries to get energy equal to the outside temperature. Sorry, the temperature equals to the outside temperature. But this not this not this does not happen because you are eating, you are gaining energy from your food. That's why your body temperature is maintained as it is, and the outside temperature is there. And the difference in your body temperature and outside temperature remains the same as long as you eat, you supply with energy. But once you stop supplying with energy, once the human has died, what happens is the temperature becomes closer and closer. That is the temperature of the system and surroundings becomes closer and closer. And at certain certain moment, it attains equilibrium such that there is no difference in temperature between the human body and the outside. So that is a case of equilibrium, that is the system is isolated, but the living human being is in an, is an open system, it can take energy, so it attains a steady state. Okay, and now moving on to three types of equilibria, thermal equilibrium. Here, the two ends, one is at hot and the other is cold. And after a while, it attains equilibrium so that the temperature throughout is the same. You don't see a temperature difference between the hot and cold end as we have seen before. And the mechanical equilibrium is movement. Like it's a, up to the pressure difference is maintained zero between the system and the surroundings. It moves, the processes are going on. But when there is the pressure difference is maintained zero or when the pressure inside and outside are equal, the Condition is called mechanical equilibrium and we know chemical equilibrium where the rate of reactions are equal. The rate of forward and backward reactions are equal. So, those are the mainly three types of equilibria, thermal, mechanical and chemical equilibrium. And now coming to the zeroth law of thermodynamics, it states when two systems A and B, when they are in equilibrium with a third system C, obviously the two systems A and B are in thermal equilibria. Very Important but very simple to understand that is the Sirot law of thermodynamics. Okay, with that we end this part and the next big thing is on our discussion will be on heat and work. Okay, thank you.